Great. People are back after the break. Quickly raise up your hands. Okay, out of 22 participants, I could see 13 of you are back after the break. It's good to know about it. So we'll move on with our topic for the day. Before that, so what was yesterday's topic? What were, uh, was your understanding on it? Can someone add on? A string and uh, some string. operations on strings. Yes. Good. Next. Capacity and ensure capacity. Okay, those are the methods on your uh, strings, right? Adding on, what all you understood? These are the things which we discussed. Good. What was your understanding? Uh, if you specify ensure capacity, the uh, if uh, it exceeds the present capacity, it will. Uh, Increase the capacity by 2 into 2 plus 2. Like the present number, the capacity into 2 plus 2. Okay, okay. Got it. The calculation on which the size or the capacity is getting increased. Okay, good. Next. Uh, and uh, in concatenation of strings, we use the keyword as concat. And in string buffer, we use append. Okay, correct. Yes. And uh, in string, we can't uh, manipulate, like change it. It is, it is immutable. But if you use string buffer, it is mutable. Okay, yeah. It's about mutable and immutable concepts. Good. Anything else? Uh, and substring concept we learned. Substring. Okay. Can you explain what a substring method does? Uh, dot substring, if you specify 0 to... Uh, uh, like we have to specify the uh, range from which it starts to the range with from range uh, end range. So it, if you yep. specify uh, dot s one like string dot uh, s of str of zero to four, so it will uh, print the number uh, print the digits or uh, print the letters which are there in character array uh, zero to three. So n minus one till n minus one it will print. Okay, good. So yesterday we had a discussion on one of your non-primitive data type, which was on string. And can someone tell me string is under which package? Java.lang. Lang package. Lang package. Okay. So, okay, good. So this is about your basic understanding on your strings. Now let me move on for the next non-primitive data type. What is the next non-primitive data type which we have? Array. Arrays, right? So today we'll have a discussion on the concept of arrays. Again, arrays is a very well-known concept. And you guys can please add on your understanding. Then I'll go with some example programs to understand the major concepts. What do you know about arrays? A collection of similar data types. Objects of similar data types. Objects of similar data types. Okay. Next. There are single dimensional and multi dimensional arrays. Okay, when we speak about arrays, we have types of arrays which is single dimensional and multi dimensional. Okay. Uh, index starts from zero. Indexing starts from zero. And in Java, we do not have the concept of pointers. Maybe, Pratik, you can reframe your statement. And Ashwini, as you say, collection of similar data types, uh, as I have told in yesterday's session, maybe we can reframe the statement without the term called a collection, because that is a separate concept called collection framework in your Java. So it might uh, not be a, a proper statement. Okay, so yes, when we speak about arrays, why did this arrays came into picture is uh, the requirement is that what was the requirement whenever you wanted to store a single value then you went up creating a variable of a respective data type what if, if i wanted to store more than one input in a sequential manner then how do i do it then the answer for that question was about creating an array variable then 
whenever what are the things to be kept in our mind when we speak about arrays yes array accept homogeneous types of input which means it accepts similar data type input only and how does it get stored it stores in a sequential manner in a consecutive manner then how do we access them with the help of your index number everything is fine next when we speak about types of array we have single dimensional multi dimensional well and good now what is the syntax how do you create an array variable let me share the screen of eclipse meanwhile you guys answer me how do we create an array variable you can use your chat box to give an answer of creating an array variable okay we give the data type followed with we'll give a name for your variable and we give the bracket what was the name of that bracket square bracket square bracket okay so the name of the bracket which we tell was array bracket but actually the name is subscript from now on understand the brackets which we use it for the array variable is called as array bracket just because we use it for the uh, variable of array okay by when days went on we started telling it's a bracket used for array which is array bracket but actually the technical proper name is subscript is that everyone clear yes so the right syntax a complete syntax i have got from two different people one is neha and the other one is ratan okay that is the right syntax so how do you create an array variable you tell what is the data type you give a variable name and you give your subscript so either you give subscript after your variable or after your data type that is not a problem next since arrays are predefined classes whenever you wanted to initialize your array with a size what is the size of your array then you create an object for it and again you give a subscript and mention the size over there there is a small mistake in nega's answer wherein in that subscript of your object side you should mention the size either you receive the size from the user or you directly mention it okay so this is one format in case if you do not go object creating will the object be created the answer is yes how in your strings when you go creating a variable using string literal or using new keyword obviously neither of the way object will be created it is not a case that only if you use you uh, use new then object will be created that understanding is wrong whenever you create a string variable irrespective of any type object will be created similarly whenever you create an array variable irrespective of you manually creating object or you directly passing your input object will be created clear yes ma'am okay now let me create a project and let me tell this is date in and in which i'll create a package and so i'll create a class called notes wherein if any notes are required to be given i'll give over here so how do you create an array variable as i told for example if i'm creating an integer array then i'll say int array name i mean the variable name and i'll say new int and you give the array bracket i mean the subscript if you just write this this is your error you have to tell what is the size of your array then this is one possible way if not you can say array bracket and you can also pass inputs over here now this is also right this is also a static way of array creation this is also a static way of array creation only this is also static this is also 
static. What is dynamic? In case if you create a array variable and you not directly tell what is the size of your array. Instead, for example, we know how scanner class works. Okay. So you say and you get the permission and you say int i is equal to se dot next and this i is nothing but your or else I'll say int size is equal to sc dot next. Then I give this sc dot next int because it is of integer. And I'll pass the size over here. This is dynamic way of array variable creation. Is everyone clear with the types of variable creation? Good. Now, comes there comes your next question. What is the length? Like we had spoken about the type of input homogeneous and how does it get stored? Yes, it is getting stored in a consecutive manner. What about the length? Is it a fixed one or is it a growable one? What do you think? Fixed means, for example, now if I have told 5 or if I have told 60, 10 to 60, which means 6 inputs, after writing some 20 lines of code, when I try adding the 7th one, will that accept? Or you have to go to the initial stage and modify it. What do you think? Ma'am, uh, modify it. Modify it. Manual modification is required because arrays are going to be fixed in length. Okay. At the initial stage, how much ever the size you have decided, irrespective of any way, that will be the fixed size till you complete the end of your program or until you use that variable. This is also the next most important point, which you wanted to keep it in your mind. Okay, good. So is there any other points which you want to add on with respect to array? Okay, then now we'll move on for some examples. I will create a class. And I will name the class as array class or else array. See, always remember whenever you are naming your class, make sure you are not giving any predefined name for your classes. Then there comes a confusion. That is why I always go with an extra name saying example or demo. That will actually avoid the confusion. So here I'm creating a class called array class demo. Okay. So we are going to see some methods or the possible manipulations which you can do with array. Then we'll go for the types. Now let me create an array variable. It's an integer array. So I'm giving int array. Adding on with subscript. And I'm passing inputs in a static manner directly by giving the inputs. I'll say it is 10, 20. I'm just giving some random values. So there is no specification. You can give any random, but make sure you are giving an integer variable. Now, in this value still did. Whenever I create an integer variable and I store any value, then I directly tell that variable to be printed, correct? Similarly, if I wanted to print an array variable, how do I do it? Print array of i. You have to go with the variable name? Yes. Okay. Others? Just give me a minute. Meanwhile, others give your answers in the chat. I'll be having a look.
okay yeah so i'm back so here i could see some answers using for loop good so using loops you can do like print your array values okay for example if i wanted to print only 22 was my output what will i do so loops will help me to print all the values now if i wanted to print only the value 22 stored in your array variable then how do i print it i hope i am audible okay yeah i could see answers in the chat yeah so now in case okay if i print just this variable instead of not mentioning the index what would be my output your answers are right you ended up giving me int arr of 3 which helps me to give the value number 22 but in case if i give just int arr what would be the my output the address great good so whenever you are working on with arrays make sure that when you just use a variable for your printing you get the starting address i mean the array pointing alone okay if you wanted to access the values then it's you have to know which is the location or the index or the position and you have to mention it specifically only then you get your expected output so within your subscript you give the index number 3 and why it is 3 to get 22 is because your indexing starts from 0 so it's very good to know that you have such a good clarity on the concept of arrays so on that note now we'll move on now i if i okay i'll remove these two lines so in case if i wanted to convert this to a string of inputs so we have seen two string method in your classes and object session correct what is a two string does what is the use of two string method or else i'll ask a different question print output okay what type of output for example integer to string no two string uh, variables which is present in the class it will print that one okay the variables which is present in the class what type of conversion happens there Yes, correct. Variables are located where. So, two string is a method which will convert your object into a string of inputs. Okay. So, when do we use two string? Whenever you wanted to print a variable which is pointing to an object, and when you do not want the object reference, instead the values inside that object. Are the values stored inside the variables of that object? Then you go using two string method. Similarly, if my requirement is I wanted to print just the variable, but instead I want the values. Now, every one of you agreed that you get int arr will end up giving you the address of your array. But even that. is not the case i want the values i do not want to use for loop i do not want to uh, access it with index 1 by 1 i just want all the values in a sequential manner then what do you do is you go calling the two string method which is inside your arrays class arrays dot two string see here two string method is there and right now our input is integer so i'm selecting the integer argumented method and you pass this int arr see here you get your output as like your array wherein you did not mention index number wherein you did not write the loop but instead you are getting array of inputs as your output could you see the difference to your line number 12 and 13 yes ma'am yes so two string is a method to convert your object into values it can be any type of values now that is why i told you depending on the data type you select which two string you have to choose so this arrays dot 
arrays is a class which will have two string method see here it has boolean it has byte character double float int long even object direct object short so i want integer so i selected integer and i passed my variable so which helps me to give or get the output in the just with a variable in the form of values okay now the next question is in case if i want it in ascending order how do i do it i want my inputs in the ascending order do we need to write a logic to print it in ascending order or do we have any predefined method just tell me that then we'll move on what's your guess predefined predefined method okay do you guys know what is the name of the method if that is the case okay so the name of the method is going to be sort okay so here i say arrays dot sort see here for sort also you have byte character double float int long object all different data types whichever array variable type you have that you can select i say sort which inputs i wanted to sort the inputs in my int arr after that if i print the same see your output you get an increasing order which is ascending order Yes, yes so the next thing which you should understand is the manipulations which we do in java may be very specific the manipulations which you do in arrays or string will affect the source input now tell me what is source input here which is a source input the input which we initialize it is nothing but your source input original int array correct the inputs which we initialize it for the first time that is your source input now after sorting it it is getting stored again in the same variable only so the manipulations which we do will be stored in your source or will make a change in your source input okay now next in case i believe every one of you will be aware of the concept of searching and sorting correct yes sir. searching and sorting <coughs> yeah sorry so for sorting yes for sorting i have called a method called sort in case if i wanted to do a search do i have any predefined method the mm -hmm. answer is yes for example if i wanted to search and input which is same 22 let's consider okay now in case if i wanted to perform a binary search see here i say arrays dot see here you get binary search and it may receives all type of inputs so i say i want a binary search which will accept integer value and i wanted to tell what value to be searched and now when i run my code i get the index of that and why do i get 5 as my output now previously when i wanted 22 you told me it is 3 so we got the output but this time i'm telling 22 to be searched and it says it is in the fifth index because i'm trying to find it after sorting so this would be the input reference for searching and that is why you get your index number 5 everyone clear Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, what is the task of yours? Is you have to analyze the class called arrays. See here, there is a class called array which will be having so many methods. See here, there is a method called sort with different. As I showed you, all the different data types, right? For all the data types, sort method will be there, followed with. So all these are the. possible search as we had parallel sort and for parallel sort all different data types will be there so what is the task of yours is to get to know what all predefined methods are available inside your array class and how do it work that you have to find it out is everyone clear with that and in case if you come across with the 
anything called come do not bother it is the upper points only which will be discussed you can ignore which is of long data type similar okay now we search see here we have found the method for binary for all the other data types also so will is it possible for you guys to find out the methods available in array class and update yourself yes no okay i've got confirmation from anvita others pratik says yes okay good so these are the basic things which you should be aware about it now moving on yesterday in your strings we had an understanding about equals method correct in case if you wanted to do or use your equals method in arrays how do you use it so let me create one more array variable because equals need two inputs to be compared so i create one more array variable and i will initialize it with some values next if i wanted to use equals method for example i am saying arrays dot equals which will be receiving an integer array so int array you give both the arrays now when you run it you get false as your output because your first array is having seven different or six different inputs and your second array is having only three different inputs so that is why you get this answer for example if i give the same set of inputs let's imagine you are giving the same set of inputs here now when you run the code you get again the false okay now what am i going to do i'm going to give the sorted one this is all you have to do it when you are practicing it okay now i'll run it again what is your output it is true so how does this equals method works by this time you should have understood how does your equals method work in your concept of arrays it checks every element at every position if it equals yes, it, yes it checks value by value with index by index correct it checks one by one okay you may tell in the previous case also we had same input agreed but the position was different it blindly how does it compares is it does not compares all the inputs and come to a conclusion no i say dot equals int arr int arr 1 so the first input was 10 here also first input was 10 agreed the next input was 14 if here also next input was 14 only then it continues the comparison if it sees a difference it will abruptly come out saying that the both the inputs are not same it does not waste its time by comparing all the elements even if one element is different it is going to be a different right at the end of the day we say it both the inputs are not same so you are should be very very careful why did i tell you this because in your multiple choice question you can get this question you will have this int arr and you will have this int arr now for example if i do not do this sorting let's imagine now what should be your output is it true or false false it is a false because 10 10 20 14 different in input so you get false as your output just because i'm sorting out over here the result of sorting is matching with this okay the result of sorting would be this so 10 10 good 14 14 15 15 18 18 20 20 now in case if you get 21 here 21 22 mismatch of values false just because the current input is matching it goes checking the next input if the current input is not matching without wasting time it comes out and say it's a not a equal value 
clear? Always dot equals in your uh, predefined classes compares your value only. Clear for everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Now here, there is one more method which I want you to be aware of. So here I'm creating one more variable. Then I will say, now instead of me manually giving the input, I would like to take a copy of it. So I say, arrange dot copy of. Now maybe I'll change this to be. Okay, I'll take this array one as reference copy of. I wanted to make a copy of int arr1. Okay, now this copy of is a method. Okay, will expect you to mention the size of your expectation. So here you say 10. How many values you have? Okay, I guess. I have selected the wrong one. Let me reselect it. So you have copy. Yeah, see here, copy of. Maybe I'll type it completely. The copy of which has Boolean, byte, character, double, float. I want an integer one. I take integer. What is the arguments? You have to give the variable whose value you wanted to copy and the new length. So here, I wanted to copy either int arr or int arr1. I'll say int arr1. And how much would be the length you expect? I say 10 is my expected one. Okay. So now here, yeah, I didn't give the array bracket here. Okay. Now here, when I print ARR2, what is your expected output? When I say ARR2, I in ARR1, we have only three values. But I say ARR2 should have length of 10. Then what would be the output? Zero or chunk values after that. Sorry, can you repeat? Zero or chunk values after 22. Okay, zero or junk values. Okay. Others give a try. So Pratik has zero. told zero. Okay, let's run the code. You get zeros. Why is it zero? Is it always zero? Okay, why is it a zero is since your variable is of integer. Yes, since your variable is integer, the default value of integer is zero. So you you get zero. In case if it is float, then 0, 0.0. In case if it is string, then null. So depending on the default value, if you wanted to add an extra length, then that can be added. Now, for example, if I give two, what would be my output? The output is it takes only the first two values. Clear? Okay. Yes, Good. Now, next thing, this is a copy of means whatever is there in your previous array, you make an exact copy. Now, I wanted to, uh, for example, let me consider this as 10 only. Now, I wanted to keep all this value of, I mean, all this 10 values to be 22. I have 10, 15, 22 and all zeros. I want all the 10 values to be 22. How do I make it happen? So I'll say arrays dot fill. There is a method called fill, which will fill all the index with the specified value. I'm going to give a integer one. So I say int. Which array you wanted to fill? I wanted to fill the second array. So I'm selecting it. What value you wanted to fill? I wanted to fill 22. Now I will say this maybe I'll do a copy. I'll say this array value, array variable to be printed. Now see when I run my code, could you see all 22s are printed? Yes, ma'am. So whenever you want a 
specific input to be filled in all the locations, all the indexes, then you go telling or using the method called fill. Okay, so here comes the end of your first example. If everyone are clear, please do type clear in your chat. Okay, good. So now comes your next question. Now, here I'm creating an array variable and I'm telling there are five, sorry, seven inputs over here. Now, in case if I say seven different arrays into it, what does it mean? For example, let me create a variable. I'll say it's an array variable. Okay, sorry, it should be, maybe I believe everyone of you know, we can create array variable, we can create a normal variable of user defined classes that everyone of you know. How do I say int i is equal to 5? Similarly, I can say student i also. Everyone knows that? Yes, no, quick. Okay, so see here, for example, I'm creating a class called student. Okay. So what all inputs can I get it from a student class? ID, register number. ID, I mean register number. Maybe I'll give us a roll number. Next. Name. Name. So I'll give name. More than sufficient. And what? access modifier do we usually give what was the preferred one private. private private so you give private over here good whenever you have private variable how do you access them you can access either through getters and setters or using your constructors so i'm selecting i'm giving both Based on the user requirement, the user can decide. So here I will generate both constructors using fields. I am generating both the things. So done. Now we are creating, I mean, I will create one more class maybe. I will say array of objects. Okay, now how did I create an integer variable, an integer array variable? Similarly, I can create a student array variable also. Line number six is also right. Line number seven is also correct. Now tell me, this is of what type? When I say an array variable of integer, then that is of primitive. When I say array, array variable of student, it is a, it is what? Student is what and what type is that? Object. Object. Okay. Can I say student is my user defined class? A non-primitive one. Good. So now how do I initialize it now? Student, since it is a, since int is a primitive one, it takes a normal value like 10, 20, 15 like this, correct? But student is a class and it has two different variables in which, so whenever I wanted to initialize it, I create an object for the student class to initialize the variable, yes or no? Do you guys agree? Whenever I wanted to initialize an integer variable, I directly say equal to and assign the value. Whenever I wanted to initialize a student info, will I say directly student roll number student name or will I create an object for the student and with that reference do I initialize? What is your idea? 
creating or pretend and initializing it. Creating the student object and we do it. Now in arrays, how do you do that? If someone asks you, here is the solution. So here I have created a student array variable. Next, here only you can directly say, this is going to be our object of student. Let me say five students. Next, you can initialize like a regular a of zero. How do you say a of zero? Maybe here only I'll give the difference. Here you say equal to new int of five. Okay. So now in case if you wanted to give arr of zero, you say 10. Next arr of one is equal to 20. Then, so it is 2, 3, 4. So we have got 5 inputs, correct? 30, 40, and 50. This is how we do. I believe every one of you will understand from line number 6 to 11. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, now in case, if your data type is a user-defined class, how do you access it? I mean, how do you initialize it? So you say, since it is an object or a student is a user-defined class, you say new student and the role number is one and name is Keetana. Next, A of one, new student, and let me pick some name from the participant list. Okay, Pratik. So what am I doing? Instead of assigning a normal value, I'm creating an object there. Two, three, and four. So the next name which I saw in the chat box is Manvita. So I'm giving Manvita's name. Next is Yashwant. So, Yash name. So, hi. That. So, here since it is integer, I am assigning an integer value. Here since it is student. So, directly I create an object. This is array of objects. Clear for everyone? Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great then, yeah. Good. So, now moving on for your multidimensional array. Okay. So, you might have heard about this name called jagged array. Before going for multidimensional array, you would have heard about jagged array. No, ma'am. Okay, in case if you have not gone through it, there is one more array called jagged array. Okay, so what is the difference is jagged array is also a kind of multidimensional array only, but multidimensional array will have equal number of rows and columns. Jagged array will not have equal number of rows and columns. When I say 3 cross 3, it is a multidimensional array, which means 3 rows, 3 columns. When I say 3 cross 2, it is going to be jagged array. This is a very simple statement which I am telling you. I will give some example for you to understand. So here, I am creating a class. I will say a multidimensional array demo which has public static void main okay now here what i'll do is i will create a separate class which will actually help us to write a logic okay because when it comes to multi-dimensional array wherein you get rows and columns the for loop will be a nested for loop correct so here I will create an another class where I'll write the logic. I'll say ML array. Okay. In which I'm creating one method called so 
sorry one method for printing your array no different logic at all which we already know so i'm creating a method now this method is going to receive an integer array which is a two dimensional which is rows and columns okay now how do you print this values the first one is what the first subscript whenever you have to subscript the first subscript represents what row no. it is always row irrespective of any variable it is always row the second one is your column so always whenever you have a rows and columns you will have two for loop the first one will indicate your row and the inner one will indicate your column this you should always keep it in your mind and i will say int i is equal to what value should i initialize it with i zero zero why because your indexing starts from zero okay in all the programs you have seen zero is initialized why because your indexing starts from zero in case if you give one it doesn't consider the first value instead it starts from your first index value that is the reason next in case if you know just give me a minute okay so now here when i wanted to give a condition what would the condition mention tell me what should i write directly your uh, for loop should work till where instead if you don't know how to give the condition tell me what should be given like till where it should be counted till the last yes, in right. of your rows correct number of rows how do you decide your number of rows is you have to take the variable which holds your input and call the method called length okay so this will actually count the number of rows for example if you are having a 2 cross 2 matrix then i'll say 10 20 30 40 okay now c dot length will always count your rows means how many index of row you have for your c then you have to say c plus plus this will count your row now here comes your next challenge now you are going to write your loop for your column i'll say int j is equal to 0 J. Now tell me how do I calculate the number of columns in my particular row? What is that array matrix? C of zero dot length. C of zero. Maybe right, but with a small mistake. It's not C of zero. C of five. C of five. C of I because for the current row, how much index you have? So when I say C of I dot length. what happens when your i value is 0 c of 0 length c of 0 length is 2 so that is your number of columns when your i value is 1 c of 1 dot length so accordingly it will be calculating it okay sorry here it is i plus plus and here also it is j plus plus is everyone clear how do you write your for loop condition for your rows and columns if you want to directly give the number it's easy 
but when you receive the inputs from the user you cannot directly give the numbers correct in that case this is how the logic you have to write is everyone clear with this quick confirmation yes ma'am okay great now moving on now it is very simple you just to print c of i and j okay so that now i have just written the logic now i am going to and i should not give print ln because each and every time it goes to the new line only if your column is completed it should go for your new line so i am giving this printing outside your column loop inside your for loop of row then now if i want to call if i wanted to print what will i do i will create first an array i'll say int c subscript for your rows and columns this is your array into which you will have separate arrays like this this is multi dimensional array okay so for example here if i give 12 comma 45 and here i'll give 10 comma 40 and i will also give 5 comma 7 now this is your 2 cross 2 array matrix correct now i will just call ml array since it is static i do not want to create object ml array dot print array printing c now when i run my code i get my output without spacing if i want spacing what should i have done in the logic over here only after printing i wanted to concatenate it with space coming here now if you run your code you will be able to see a space between each and every value clear yes ma'am so this is your multi dimensional array now what is this jagged array is nothing but i am going to create a separate class for jagged array demo jagged array is also a kind of multi dimensional but i am doing a copy of this since it is almost same okay but the only change is you will not have or you will not find similar number of rows and columns for each and every array so now here what happens in your c array you have 12 45 10 40 5 7 okay now if i give 12 45 comma 60 and when i say 10 and here it is 5 8 12 60 7 now tell me in your multi dimensional array you had three arrays inside an array correct Yes. yes all the three arrays had only two inputs yes or no yes now jagged array is also having three arrays inside an array but does all the array have similar number of elements no this is jagged array so whenever you see such type of inputs now when i run the code also i will get the same output because i have returned the logic and i have told the compiler to calculate the length for each and every row and column when i say zero row in my zero row i have three columns so that will be calculated because i have given c of zero length next time the i value is 1 so in your c of 1 you have only one column that will be printed next next it is i value 2 c of 2 is having five columns so accordingly it will be printed this is the advantage of you generalize generally generally write your condition for your loops so this is a very basic difference which you should be aware about your jagged arrays in case if you have any doubts please do ask me and i want you to do much more research about jagged arrays because it's again a type of your array only which many of you are not aware clear
Okay, people are clear with all the things which we have discussed. Raise up your hand. Okay, out of 23 participants, 14 of you have raised up your hand. Good. So with this note, we are winding up the concept of arrays. So I have just told you the syntax in your notes, followed with certain possible operations which we do. And I've again told you to find all the possible operations available in your class array. Then in case if you are going with the array of objects means you are creating a user-defined array variable. How do you pass inputs? And what is multidimensional array? In case if you wanted to iterate it, how do you write your logic? And what is jagged array? Okay. So arrays, almost some new concepts I have told you. But whatever you already know, you brush it up and learn it. Okay. So here I am stopping the tech discussion. And what is the status of your uh, string PPT? You can tell what is the status. Saying like first PPT, these many slides. Or second PPT, these many slides. Or not it started. Let it be anything. Just use your chat box to give. Okay. It's fine when you come up with some genuine answers. I'm completely okay with that. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, Manvita. What should we do? I left early yesterday, so I didn't know. Okay, so I believe you are in the Google Classroom. Yes, yes, I'm there. I got this. So yesterday, I uploaded a PPT for string. I mean, three different PPTs. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I wanted you to start working on it. There are so many other examples which will help you a lot. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, yeah. So I could say most of you have not started. I can understand. But keep it as a priority and start it. And you are getting a weekend. Uh, please do utilize it properly. Okay, good. I'm very happy that you came up with some genuine answers. So let me move on for the attendance. Okay, how many of you are from B66? Okay, please unmute and give your attendance. Ma'am, Manoj present. One minute. Manoj, yes. Next. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, no right, ma'am. Yes. Mom, Sonia. Sonia, yes. Only four of them. I noticed even Pratap. He was not here. Initially, he was there. Okay. So, I guess only four are from B66. Moving on for B73. Okay, Akib. Present, ma'am. Ankita. Present, ma'am. Aarti. Present, ma'am. Deepak. Present, ma'am. Deepti. Present, ma'am. Kirtana. Present, ma'am. Manish. Present, ma'am. Manvita. Present, ma'am. Mishab. Neha. Present, ma'am. Pratik. Present, ma'am. Rakshat. Present, ma'am. Pratin. Present, ma'am. Ritesh. Present, ma'am. Seema. Present, ma'am. Sheikh Mohammed. Present, ma'am. Sainath. Present, ma'am. Shavya. Okay, I believe all of you have given your attendance. Oh, so, hey, yeah, sorry. I'm forgetting every day. So, hey, yes. Is there anyone missed out here with, with your attendance? 
okay great then yeah so that's it from my end for the tech part today please do start working on your concepts in a regular basis commit it to your github account and keep it updated always one or the other day i'll be having a check on it okay thank you have a great evening we'll meet again